as podcasters and business owners, finances are not the sexiest thing to talk about. It's not fun to sometimes even look at your finances and say, oh my goodness, what in the world? I tripped and I bought 50 books. I did not mean to do that. (laughs) So it is important to understand where our finances are and where we're putting our money and our effort as podcasters and as business owners. Today's guest, Brandon, has a very incredible podcast all about finances from the perspective of business owners and other things that you should be doing to ensure that you are set up for life, not just for now, but for later as well. He gives some really great ideas on where to get started today without feeling like you're overwhelming yourself, but also being clear that this is work and it's worth it. Please join me in welcoming Brandon to the podcast. Hello, Brandon. I am so excited to have you on today. If you could start by telling everyone who you are, what you do, and about your podcast. Hey, Lisa. This is, of course, Brandon Ely. I have a podcast and YouTube channel called Wealth Wisdom Financial. We really think about not just the invest everything, but building a solid foundation, whether it's a foundation, financial foundation, thinking about where you want to go, where you want to be at in the end. Most people don't even know that. And then reverse engineering, whether it's using profit first, we are skilled in the profit first system for business owners. If you don't know what profit first is, every business owner should read that book. And we also are infinite banking and banking yourself certified practitioners, which means we use a properly designed life insurance policy as a way to do things now, like I can use my policy as a line of credit to buy, I don't know, real estate or podcast mm-hmm. guesting, which I did actually use it for podcasting service a few years back. So that's in essence what we do, but really just helping people think smart about their finances, building a, a plan and then moving forward with confidence and certainty. Yeah. So The podcast is obviously in the financial realm, right? And I'm trying to think of like, if there's any podcasts that I've listened to or guests that we've had on that are in the finances, I don't think so. So you are the first of your kind over here. And I love also that you are a co-host with your wife. So talk a little bit about how the idea of like, okay, we're going to start a podcast. How is that going to look? And also co-hosting with a spouse sounds interesting. I, like, I can't imagine trying to co-host with my, with my husband. So I'm interested in knowing like how that dynamic kind of works. Yeah. So, well, we've been married for a long time. We've, this is our second business together. We used to own a coffee shop and the way that we've learned is as a team, specifically a marriage team is you have strengths and you have weaknesses, right? Every one of us does, uh, your team does, even if you're have a business team, right? And so your best team is your marriage, in my opinion. And so what we just happen to be is business owners as well. And the way in which when when we had our other business, it was a coffee shop, kind of looked at it as I was front of the house, customer facing, and she was back of the house doing all of the payroll, the the taxes, uh, planning, all of that stuff. So she's more of an implementer. I'm an entrepreneur. So that's fun. She's also a, I don't know if you're familiar with the Enneagram, but she's a five on the Enneagram. Okay. So she likes to gather information, but her best way of growing in her redemption of whatever person she wants to be is putting that out there. So mm-hmm. then that's what she does. She's it's her superpower. I'm just there for colorful commentary. I, <laughs> bear, I write some help write and do a lot within the book. I helped a a bit, but mainly it was her that wrote it. Or I said, Hey, we should do this, this, and this. Now let's make it happen. And so that's kind of the dynamic there. And we've had fights on there. Some, some we've kept in and some not so much. Um, (laughs) But when it comes to finances, I mean, you think about it when you're even in the financial world, you are, you have the spendthrift and you have the saver. Usually you have the, let's go do it now. Let's wait for later kind of people, you know, and that's usually in every relationship. And so that's kind of where we just show who we are as individuals. And so it's fun and challenging. And and then we've been 
married and running a business together for a long time. So we've learned how to work it out. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And and I love that you guys are able to play to your strengths, right? Because if you enjoy what you do, you never have to work a day. Obviously, we work, right? Like we yeah. do the work, even if we don't want to, we don't feel like we have to, or that we should. And that's part of entrepreneurship. But I love that you're able to play to your strengths. And I, I can see that also with like my team where there's like the one person that I, I will like shoot ideas at. And I'm like, oh, this thing. They're like, and dial it back. Yeah, yeah. Pause. You said you were going to do this other thing first. Where are you with that? And I'm like, uh, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so they keep me on task, which is really good. But same thing, right? For your relationship. And I do agree if you're able to understand that, especially having a co-host married or not in a relationship or not, if you have a co-host, you have to be in alignment with the direction that the show is going, with the content that you're talking about, the audience. And that's, I think, why I see so many, yes, podcasts in general do end up falling to the wayside or pod fading or going to the podcast graveyard. But a lot of those are co-hosted shows or where there's three people or even four people. I've listened to shows where it started off with four people, then whittled its way down to one original person and then some random person that showed up halfway through. So you have to be aligned, especially if you plan on having a podcast be a long-term commitment. And so I love that you're able to do that with someone that you can trust to bounce ideas off of and banter on show. Uh, you know, that really helped a lot. You mentioned the previous business. and I know there's a bit of a story there that got you into finances. Can you share that with us? Yeah. So I used to own a, again, a coffee shop. We got into it because we were naive business owners and thinking we could change the world easy. It's, it's, it's just open up a business. It'll be easy, you know, and then you learn a couple of years and you're like, wait a second, this, what did I do? That was us. And you, you know that you're, I mean, your eyes are, you, yep. you have stories in your head <laughs> right now. Right. So that, and then we had a couple of years in, and this is, this leads into our and why I'm in finance, but the second year into our business, we had almost everything that could go wrong did. Right. Mm. From a miscarriage to a cat dying to my appendicitis, mother-in-law having, a, I think, a stroke, everything, everything. It was like yeah. month after month, almost biweekly. I was like, what the heck? And then we had so much debt to start this business. What we learned in this was having conversation with each other, making sure we have date night, that we don't talk about the podcast. We don't talk about the business. We talk about how's our marriage, right? And that was one area that we learned of relationship is more important than even money, right? Those kind of things. So there was three things I learned in that is know that you know that you're called to it because it's going to get hard and have a team around you. That was really, really important. A little bit later as when I learned the third part was, which was know your numbers, right? A lot of times business owners Say, oh, well, if I just invest here, then it's going to go here and it'll be fine. If I just make more money, it'll be blah, 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 right? You, you fill in the blank. So we knew our numbers. We had connected to profit first, realized we weren't paying ourselves. Because mm. you know, as business owners, you're usually last to get paid. And you're like, oh, well, I want to get a dividend from another company, but I don't give myself dividends. And that's why profit first just makes sense, Yeah, right? And if, are you familiar with Profit First at all? I am overarchingly familiar. And one of the core values of my company is one, pay myself a living wage and two, pay my team a living wage. So <laughs> paying yeah, yeah. myself is really important. I'm the sole financial provider for my family. My husband's a stay at home dad. So like, yeah. it's important that we have money coming in. <laughs> yeah. So that's really important. And what, what we just do is if a dollar comes in, we break it up into different accounts, you know, the profit account, the owner's pay account, the OPEX and taxes, mm -hmm. right? And then most, a lot of business owners forget that taxes are due, right? They're like, oh, wait, this was money that wasn't mine. Like, yeah, kind of. Anyway, so, so we helped build that foundation. And then what I found is I, I, as I moved into this industry is I had set up a life insurance policy. I, I mentioned infinite banking and banking mm -hmm. yourself. Well, what happened was I met this guy. We watched this documentary in the back of our coffee shop and the documentary was talking about banking with life. And so what we were like, oh, well, our biggest investment is us. Our biggest risk is us. I still want access. 
So I would put money into my policy and then I would use that cash value to pay off high interest debt. I used it to do a down payment on my house, various things like that, that I was Mm -hmm. able to use now. And then as I grew, I was able to overcome other challenges and opportunities because of access to capital. Because your need for capital is always needed in business, right? And what I've learned in business, in my former business, is there's two people on the payroll that is never at work. They never show up ever. And and I was like, what the heck are these guys? These guys, I need to fire them. And it was Uncle Sam, who is always there. That is, yep. I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> where in the world? And then the banks, right? The credit card processing fees. I'm like, okay, this is just stupid. They're just like leeching off of me. And so what I've learned is don't do what the banks tell you to do, do what the banks do. Learn that system because every one of us is in the banking system, every business owner. Yeah. How do I capture some of that, understand that and deploy it as a CFO? That's kind of the the idea. So then we ended up selling that coffee shop because of other experiences and We were going to be business coaches. So our first podcast was Business Activist Entrepreneur Podcast. Long mouthful there. The Um, activist tying back to the fact that your coffee business was ethically sourced and all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Love that. So we were like, oh, that sounds cool. But no one knows what a business activist is. And and we were still like trying to figure out profit, making sure because we're activists. But we, we had a lot of mindset shifts. Then... As I moved into this business, I I applied to work with my mentor and he said, no, you're too entrepreneurial. I was like, oh, great. Uh, That sucks. I I don't have a job and I have a baby coming. I got to do something. So so then he comes back to me. He's like, I have an idea. How about you and your wife start your own agency and I'll mentor you? And we're Hmm. like, that sounds good. Let's go there. I did not know that Dave Ramsey loves to hate us. I did not know that the financial world is very opinionated. And that there's a lot of things against us to tell us, oh, just put in your 401k. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. That is a system that is built intentionally to keep us enslaved, I think. So we went into that. We started our next iteration of this business was we called it Grandma's Wealth Wisdom because we weren't confident in us as well. Mm. We weren't like, oh, we're just coffee shop owner. I can't tell you about money. I, I just ran a coffee shop. That's it. But the tagline was sometimes intelligence skips a generation. Kind Very of like true. doing, <laughs> yeah, we were kind of doing Howard's mom from Big Bang Theory, if you know that show, where you never see her, but you know she's there. So we were doing that kind of thing. As we grew, we became more confident in ourselves, and we changed the name to Wealth Wisdom Financial. We still got some learning to go. Like we, we don't like to be pigeonholed. So I haven't like just said, I do infinite banking. I do profit first because no one likes to just say, I just do one thing. No, nobody right. does, <laughs> even our, ourself. But then that's marketing and saying, you need to be so clear about what you do. And I'm like, I don't like labels. Anyway, it's really hard to do when it comes to marketing because we are so much more than just a product, right? Everyone yeah. else is. And so Wealth Wisdom Financial is our now podcast. We've been doing it for years and and love it. And the reason we do it is because educating people. Like I have podcasts that as clients go through, I'm like, oh, you have a, you have this question. Oh, I have a podcast on it. Here you go. I just forget that we have them. (laughs) I got to have a Rolodex of my Rolodex to know, you know, what's happening. And if you don't know what a Rolodex is, that's like old school, like the windy thing before a phone. Right. Um, so that's how I'm in this. It's it's kind of weird and I love it. It is still a challenge because most of the time people get in their own way. They overcomplicate or they listen to the gurus on the internet and they, they say, oh, this this is what I should do. And I'm like, mm, maybe that TikTok video wasn't really meant for you. It was just a soundbite to so sell you a thing. That's a challenge. Yeah. They sell you a thing. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mentioned Dave Ramsey and, you know, I remember hearing recently, I have never subscribed to his teachings. Most of the things he says just are not relevant or feel aligned with younger generations. I am a millennial. So the idea of listening to him talk to me about finances, I was like, no, that's like my grandmother. (laughs) Like my grandmother can listen to him. That is not who I need to be learning from. And I remember recently hearing that someone was like, do you even know how much 
daycare costs right now for families? And he was like, no. It's like, you're so out of touch with people. And when you hear what daycare actually costs, it's like, oh, that's like a whole mortgage or a whole mortgage and a half for some people. Like a mortgage payment, obviously, is what I'm saying, monthly payments. Like that is a lot of money that you have to pay to have kids. (laughs) Like. Yeah. I can understand why a lot of the younger generation is maybe leaning towards not having kids or having fewer kids because it's a lot of money to have children. So, yeah, I think that you got to listen to people who are in touch with your struggles, especially I love that you work specifically with business owners, right? So they're people you understand their struggles. You can you can talk to those pain points because you've been there and you've done it as well. So I love that. The thing that I like about them is, you know, don't get into stupid debt, right? That's a good thing. Like consumer debt um, is is bad if you're just using a credit card for feeling good and, and all of that. And so it, his baby steps in that regard are, are good. However, there is positive debt, right? Using debt yeah. to buy a house, right? Sometimes you need to. The problem is when interest rates go up and the Fed interest, like, is it good to buy a house now versus two years ago? Well, it depends. Maybe, maybe not. Let's run the numbers. And they don't like the the it depends answer because that means you have to think. And maybe it is important, maybe not. Maybe mm. not have child care. I thank God I have a mother-in-law that lives with us sometimes that so she <laughs> helps with child care costs. Yeah. But also she was with that generation and guess who's having to take care of her because yeah. of certain things. I'm like, hmm, maybe the market didn't do all that it said it was going to do. And, oh yeah, put into the 401k and it'll be okay and everything's perfect. How'd that work out? Seriously, yeah. for most people. And and honestly, millennials and my my son, who is five, I don't know what generation he is, we're kind of screwed, I think. And, and we're like, we need to build foundations. This is why we, we built the book and why we do our thing is we don't have a rich relative, a business that's going to give us a pension. We right. have to do it on our own. And we if we don't understand how money works, someone will be stealing from us mm-hmm. every, every day. I mean, like literally watch this, this thing called the phone. Yep. Right. And somebody has a plan for your money. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Yes. Every time. Yeah, we were talking before in the green room about like all the different shows that there are on TV now. And I was just talking to my husband. I was like, we might need to cancel a lot of these subscriptions. I mean, we've got Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, Discovery mm. Plus, all of the HBO Max, like all of these places paying separate money. And we're playing Hulu and these other pla- like. What are we doing? At this point, we're paying way more than we did for cable three years ago, four years ago. We need to assess this because it feels like we're just throwing money at everybody. And and do the kids really need all of these different subscriptions and all of these different show options? Or do these select ones have enough for us, right? You know, you mentioned working the system of how the banks are working it, right? And it made me think of, I recently was watching someone who talks a lot about like using your library cards and being able to find library cards at different places. And she was talking about how every few months her and her husband will cancel or at least try to cancel their Audible subscription. She's like, I'm happy to pay for Audible, but I'm not, I don't want to pay you full price. And if I could get away with paying half price because you want to keep me, I will do that. And so finding ways that you can maybe halfway go go through the cancellation process to deduct your recurring bills, you know, things like that, where we can be smarter and work, work the system a bit to be able to keep some of that for ourselves and invest it in other places that are really meaningful. So, and and in yourself, I think that's the biggest thing that people need to remember. And that's not just your kids. People are like, I need to invest in myself. I'm like, yeah, but I have a lot of people that have invested in their kids' college and they're broke. Like, "Mm, you're going to be sleeping on their couch. And we have to think about that. And then I don't have, I I discontinued Audible and and I use the audio library, right? Yeah. Same things. I'm like, and it's free. That's kind of how libraries work. You just download the app. So I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'd, I have to wait a little while, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I, I think about within the profit first and personal system is we can either do two things. You can make make money, right? That's that's one thing. Make Get more clients and, the, and people focus on that. How do I make more sales, 
right? Yeah. And then profit first, we talk about an expense challenge. And sometimes an expense personal challenge is important saying, let's go through all of our recurring things and let's cut. Like, do I need this? Oh, I haven't watched Disney Plus for three months or four months. That's 20 bucks a month. Let's cut it. I, I, yeah. I don't watch anything there right? or this or that. Or, I mean, everybody has a, has, I mean, I have a membership site, but if you're not going to use the membership site, then what's the point in paying it? And, <laughs> and a lot of it's about consumption. We're told to just consume, veg out, and we don't know how to think. Mm. How often do you recommend that we do a personal review of this and then also a business one if they're the same or if the numbers are different? Yeah. So I don't know. Do you talk, do you talk to your husband about money regularly? He talks to me <laughs> regularly about money. And I talk to him about like, here's what we can expect this what month. Here's yeah. what's happening. And then he pays the bills and, and will tell me this is what's going on with savings and all of that stuff. So we kind of, yeah. I handle the business side. He handles the the home finance side. Yeah. So I think like you have to be like almost like a business. You have to have a same page meeting. Right. So for us, we wrote this book and I, I'm going to show you that five smooth yeah. stones book. It's right here. So what it is, is we've been in business and still married together for a long time. It, it wasn't by accident. And a lot of times is we put these things on the calendar. Date night is mm. on the calendar. Are there yeah. money meetings. I think we have one on Saturday, I think, where we talk about business and personal. What's our quarterly goals? Right. And then what do we accomplish? Right. You might have a business finance meeting with your team. He's not a part of that. Right. But the money that comes out to you, he then gets and, and you guys have to figure out how do I make sure. So it's a separate yeah. meeting. But what I learned in this book is and what we wrote is the world is in chaos. It's confusion, haphazard, anxious, overwhelming and stressful. Right. This was after COVID. This is having kids and them wanting their, they're selling us all the time. So it's chaos happening and our bosses are selling us. Right. We always have chaos. You know, tax code is chaos. Try and figure out your taxes for your business. It's, it's crazy. And then there's a whole industry about not paying taxes. How do you avoid taxes? And you pay somebody to figure out how to not pay the government. Right. I'm like, this is weird. So that's chaos. But what we need to do is go to what I call the still method. And whether it's your business or or this might be an EOS method for the business, like you have to have your goals. Yeah. Uh, you have to set your sights is what we call it. And that means you have to actually take away the phone, take away all the stuff coming in and ask yourself, what do I want? What does that tell me what you want? What you really, really want? What's that yeah. Thing? You got to ask yourself that. I, and that people are like, yeah, but can you make this smaller and make it easy for me to do? I'm like, I can't answer that question for Alicia. Yeah. I can't do that. You have to do that. You have to figure out, okay, between you and your husband, what do I want? What do we want our world to look like? What do we want? And this is what I also think about. I have a five-year-old. Mm -hmm. How do I build a place where my son's kids are going to like me? Right. First, I got to start with right now and build that in. So set my sights of where do I want to be when I'm 82 kind of idea. Yeah. Right. And then reverse architect. So it's set your sights. Then you have to track your in and out. ST. Inspect your progress. That The T is like budgeting. Mm -hmm. uh, inspect saying, okay, you, this is that I have a lot of things there that are on the pre-subscription. I'm inspecting it. Then you look for 1% adjustments. What can I cut? to breach towards my goals, maybe that $20 go into there and, and should go to savings is, is more important. Right. Yeah. And then live deliberately S T I L L. And then mm. you do that and you asked how often, well, our lives are moving. You have childcare costs, which you probably won't have in 10, 15 years. Right. So it's moving, it's changing, but everybody has a plan for your money. 10 years ago, we did not have about a bazillion subscription services. Now, you know, you can subscribe to get your food delivered, right? It's ridiculous. And sometimes I feel like we're getting lazier and lazier. And I'm like, this requires work. Yeah. So how often should you do it? As often as you need is mm -hmm. what I think. And sometimes it needs to be a lot more early. And then you make it as a, as a habit, almost like exercise. Yeah, this is definitely something that I want to start implementing. Where should people start? 
right? If they're like, okay, this is a lot of information. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. I feel like the still method is going to like the first step, having a meeting with the involved parties, if that's yourself or if that's other people, having that meeting, sitting down and getting clear on what it is that you want your life to look like now and later, right? You have to factor in both. I see people, you know, they're planning for vacations two years from now. Like sometimes you got to do it like that if you want to be able to afford that vacation in two years or whatever. So yeah, definitely considering it that way. I feel like that would probably be the first. I think, I mean, the first thing I would say, of course, is buy our book. I'll do that plug is, you know, if you really want to start is Wealth Wisdom FP, this book, wealthwisdomfp.com slash shop and it is a interactive money journal, right? Nice. Where you can write this out, right? I never so told you anything about products, life insurance, annuities. None of that that matters. I mean, this is why we wrote the book is because I do make money on that. And if you don't have this figured out, it doesn't matter what you're going to do. You're just kind of looking for another hammer or nail to solve mm-hmm. things that you, you need to go deeper, right? So yeah. do that. And if if you if the book is too much, it's 40 bucks, right? The book is too much. I mean, literally, there's this thing thing called the notebook paper. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it before, but but really it's it's kind of cool. You, you you have this, right? And you uh-huh. write with a pen. Okay. <laughs> Pencil. And you can write stuff. Like, what are my goals? Mm-hmm. What do I want to be in five years? Uh, what do I want to be in 20 years? Write those things down, right? And then start yeah. st- making the steps towards that. Pretty easy, right? Yeah. But, but people make it complicated. I'm like, well, that, that's kind of how it needs to start. Buy a book. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's a, just a tool. And then if you want to have a guide, like I do, I ask these questions all the time with my clients you know, this is why we have so many podcasts is to then say, okay, where are you at? What's your rundown? Do you have, you're putting in 8% into your 401k, but your company matches only four and you think taxes are going to go up in the future. Why are you doing that? Oh, well, everybody told me I should do that. Uh, Well, maybe you shouldn't do that. Or this is another thing. You're putting in a match at 4%. But your company is 4%, your match is 4%, but your credit cards are at 23%. And you're like, well, but I'm told to do this and it's automatic. And I'm like, divert that 4% even for now over to the credit cards, maybe uh, because you are losing, right? Yeah. And that's why having a guide to ask those questions and, and do a full financial analysis is important. And that's what I do. All the time, people want me to just sell them a life insurance policy. And I'm like, that's not how it works. I'm going right. to ask you lots of goals. And I would say, have your spouse on the calls, right? Because yeah. that is super important because you're not just one person, you're two people. And sometimes there's the, we self sabotage ourselves, right? Sometimes in our own life, let alone when we have spouses and you're like, yeah, and you have guidelines. And I have a mad money account that my wife, I still ask her, Hey, you know, even this morning, I'm like, I'm going to go buy a sandwich uh, here. I don't have to ask her, but I do Mm -hmm. it out of, you know, it's it's good to do. So yeah, no, that's great. Thank you so much. Even though you're not going to buy one that I I could rant on this stuff forever. And and hopefully I'm not a jerk face like Dave, but you know, (laughs) no, this has been really informational. And I actually, I'm like, all right, I need to, I need to sit down and have a talk with my husband about this. Right. I think this is really important. And, and I know he has a lot of good points and I tend to like keep him out of the business finances, but it might be worth, he might have a different perspective. It might be worth having him kind of sit in and listen as I kind of talk Mm -hmm. through the things that are going on. And are you the owner of the? I am the owner. Yes. He does not do anything in the business, uh, but we have talked about him eventually moving in and doing more of the accounting side because he is really good at that stuff. And so it does affect him. It does affect him if (laughs) you are in charge. And then it it does not even on money side. If you, I think about this like just for me the other day of like some bad conversations and I'm like, I'm bringing this home. And my, my son, who's five, is like, you guys can't talk about work. I'm like, I'm thinking about it. So that those things bleed over into our family, too. So yeah. having that open line of communication is really important. And playing to your, your strengths. Yeah. No, I, I definitely well, agree. I think it's well, a good point. <laughs> wisdom from being married and running a business together, I, f- I feel like, you know, and we're still married. So Yes. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Thank you. No, I, this has been great. Where can people find you? Can you say that link again? We'll make sure that we have it in the show notes as well. But if they want to connect with you, get to know you and potentially yeah. work with you, where can they go to do all that stuff? Yeah, if you go to wealthwisdomfp.com, wealthwisdomfp.com, we're still working on our website again, always. And then if you look up Wealth Wisdom Financial, you'll find me on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and maybe you can help us beat this stupid algorithm. And podcasts, you know, I'm all over the place. Subscribe, write a review because that's what you're supposed to do and tell all your friends. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Brandon. This has been very informative. And I'm excited to take these actions and go implement them right away. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to chatting even further. Mm -hmm.